I'm Hugh Cardenas, and it's my great pleasure to be in Savage, Minnesota today with my good friend, Joe Egan. How you doing today, Joe? It's fine, Hugh. We're Thank looking you. at some very exciting Dan Patch history here. We certainly are. Including some of these beautiful prints. You know, we have just seen on the video the artist's rendering of the Dan Patch stables. And this, I believe, is one of the originals. Can you tell us a little bit about this and why we have the lines here uh, showing that this maybe originally was in four pieces. How did this all come about? Uh, yes, Hugh, this was acquired in uh, about uh, 1982, and a fellow by the name of Mr. Delvin Miller, the uh, goodwill ambassador of the Harness Horse uh, Group in the United States and Canada, has this original. And it was in four pieces when it was acquired, and Mr. Miller had his people put it back in shape and then he went on from there and had some prints made of it. Now, originally, did M.W. Savage have this artist rendering made to show the accuracy of the detail on it, like the five wings and the railroad and so forth? That is correct, Hugh. In fact, this was actually done about 1902, uh, prior to uh, Mr. Savage even owning Dan Patch. I and, see. And uh, give you an idea, they had five specific wings. And this little inset is the uh, Savage Mansion that was up on the hill in the back here overlooking this scene, right? Uh, that's right. That was a summer home, and it was uh, really a palace, and it was beautiful. And Mr. Savage could sit up there on his veranda and time the horses as his trainers trained them on the open one-mile track. Fabulous. It was a great, great piece of work. It was a magnificent setting for Dan Patch. Since we have our Dan Patch gallery set up here, let's move over and... Uh, Take a look at another print. This shows Dan Patch pacing his famous smile in 155. Give us a little more detail on that, Joe. Well, this was actually taken at the State Fair Grounds, uh, known as Hamlin, Minnesota, on September 8, 1906. And this is actually, I believe, taken from footage of the movie that Mr. Savage had produced in 1906 by his people. And it's Dan actually setting the time of 155 for a mile. The horse you see behind Dan is one of the prompter horses. They use running horses to kind of speed, make Dan move on because he had no competition other than the stopwatch. So he made that 155 against the watch because there were no other horses at that time that could beat him. That is correct. There weren't any at all, and I sure wish there were some competition because uh, that would have made Dan go faster. And probably today, Dan Patch would still be the fastest horse alive. I agree with that, Hugh, <laughs> but I have friends in the uh, harness horse racing business that say that some of the horses today may uh, exceed Dan's record, even if he was around today, but I don't think so. I think Dan would be a winner. Interesting speculation. Let's take a walk over to this picture. Okay. And this looks like a real gem. This is a classic. We see this quite often every time Dan Patch is mentioned. But this is a print, and quite a rare one, I understand. And explain what we're looking at here. Well, we're looking at uh, here is a print of Dan Patch and the uh, driver, Harry Hersey, who took over in uh, 1903 after Myron McHenry uh, was relieved of his duties. And this was actually taken uh, in 1905 at Lexington, Kentucky, when uh, Dan established a time of 155 and a quarter for a mile. Okay. And that was a record at that time. And I noticed on the print they have some of Dan's other times listed here. And if, if I remember correctly now, uh, Hersey was Dan's last trainer driver. That is correct. You and uh, actually, it was Mr. Hersey that actually had the benefit of driving Dan uh, and setting all these world records that uh, some of them stand even today. It's absolutely fantastic history. And speaking of things that are fantastic, we have a real treat for you right now. Joe and his wife, Jean, commissioned an artist to make a replica of the stables of Dan Patch. So what you have just seen in the video, you are now going to see in model form. So let's... Take a walk over and get a closer look at this. Real Joe. good. Yep. Well, Joe, here we are at the miniature version of the Dan Patch stables, and this is absolutely beautiful. You had this job commissioned to a local artist, right? Uh, yes, Hugh, that is correct. In 1982, my wife Jean and I asked this gentleman if he wouldn't build this model for us, and it's actually on a scale of one quarter inch to a foot. Now, the size across the front of the real stables was how much? Well, the real stables actually measured 400 feet from end to end, and the rotunda was 90 feet in diameter and 100 feet high, and each one of the five wings were 155 feet long. 
How large uh, in footage is this? What are the dimensions of the model we're looking at? Well, the model itself, you, is about 10 feet long in the front and 7 feet deep. And I notice you have a little power plant back yes, there. Yes, Hugh, that is correct. Uh, that was the power plant that uh, generated the heat for the entire complex. It was all steam heated, and even the bachelor uh, grooms lived up in the upper part of the uh, rotunda. Okay, and this uh, turret up on top held a 5,000-gallon water tank that supplied all of the stables, right? That is correct. Fantastic. An absolutely incredible piece of work. And I think it uh, accurately represents the original uh, architecture that M.W. Savage himself put into this. Uh, right? It certainly does, Hugh. And as far as we know, it's the only one in existence, the only model. All right. Well, it's another highlight from the era of the great Dan Patch and M.W. Savage.